Sick of blowing your subs? Hi, I'm Daniel with Sonic Electronics, and today I'll be talking to you about one of the most important, yet misunderstood concepts in car audio, clipping. Whether you're an experienced car audio junkie, or just considering your first system, this video is going to help you better understand how to get the best performance from your audio gear. Let's take a look at a plain 40 Hz test tone on our oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is basically a tool that allows you to observe varying signal voltages. This is a normal, healthy audio signal. You'll notice that it's a smooth curve and it's rounded towards the top. You can also see that as we turn the volume up, the amplitude or intensity of the sound wave will increase. Once the amplifier tries to amplify or intensify the signal beyond its capacity, the sound waves begin to square off at the top and bottom peaks. This, my friends, is clipping. Signal clipping is the number one cause of blown subwoofers. Why? Well, when an amplifier is performing properly, it's sending out AC, or alternating currents. This means that the positive and negative sides alternate, changing the magnetic polarity of the voice coil and moving the subwoofer up and down. When the amp clips, the signal basically becomes DC, or direct current, at the peaks and valleys of the sound wave. Once this happens, the subwoofer cone will move straight in one direction, stressing the suspension of the woofer and causing the voice coil to heat up like the filament of a light bulb. We all know how hot subwoofers can get during normal playback, and a clip signal can turn your sub from hot to toasted. There are three primary ways to avoid clipping. The first is to choose an amplifier that is capable of giving your sub every clean watt it wants. If you crank the volume up, the sub is going to do everything in its power to play that loud, whether the amp can keep up or not. While you can overpower the subwoofer at a certain point, you're far better off choosing a larger amplifier than a smaller one. With reasonable power, you'll be able to crank up the volume without overstressing your amp. Second, set your gain properly. You don't need an oscilloscope to set your gains, although it definitely does help. The gain is not a volume control. It's simply designed to help match the output of your head unit to the input on the amplifier. Check out our video, How to Set Your Gain, for step-by-step -step instructions and tips from the pros. Lastly, avoid the bass boost. I know it's tempting. After all, you paid good money for your sub and amp, and you want it to play at its full potential. However, the bass boost is really just a gain control that affects a narrow band of bass frequencies. If you really, really can't resist using the bass boost knob, make sure you set your gains accordingly. So, unless you're getting a haircut, you'll want to avoid clipping at all costs. I'm Daniel, and thanks again for tuning into Sonic Electronics, where the base of our knowledge is our knowledge of bass. See you next time.